In one of Richard Dawkins' books, uh, and also cited on his website as a, a quotable quote, Dawkins uh, makes this comment, like an aphorism, I guess. He says that uh, science is the poetry of reality, which I quite like in some ways. I, I like the fact that he mentions poetry, at least. Um, I'm not sure I'd go along with it entirely. I'd prefer to think of it as the kind of science being the poetry of data rather than the poetry of reality. It just begs the question really about what reality is. And then I think you're into a kind of um, a kind of leap really. So I think if we think of science as the poetry of data, it makes more sense really, to me at least. Because data is quite well identified as a concept both metaphorically and literally, and you can't disentangle the two entirely. And the data um, tends to acquire the, as a, as a property of kind of solid objects out there in the world. Uh, there are, if you're dealing with hard sciences, or physical sciences, let's say, I'll come back to the hardness of science in a minute, if you're dealing with the physical sciences, then, then data is really the stuff of that science. It's, uh, its atomic weights and its precipitation rates and its diffusion gradients and its rainfall figures and its um, temperature rises and it's all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and all that stuff, as well, it's very particular. It's um, it pre-exists. It's assumed to pre-exist any um, means of accessing it. You don't create it. You discover it or you mine it. It's also um, accessible to anyone, it's either personal and shared, which is a really important aspect of, of science. Um, that isn't true, for example, of things like wisdom or interpretation or some forms of knowledge which are not um, shared. Data is, is assumed to be in the public domain, in the same way that physical objects are supposed to be in the public domain. So it has that. Uh, it's sort of mathematic and indivisible. One piece of data will appear. Um, it can't be rendered in different ways to different uh, viewers, and, and it doesn't change uh, when it gets looked at. Um, yeah, but it, doesn't, it doesn't set up some sort of complex relationship with the with the experimenter. At least in theory, it doesn't. That's the, that's the ideal piece of data. It stays still whilst you look at it, and it's still there when you're not looking at it, so to speak. Uh, so, to that extent, um, part of the project of science has been the collection of data, and certainly that's a, a, an implicit part of all scientific procedures, the collection of data, and the interpretation of that data, and so on. Uh, and in a sense, just to paraphrase Richard Dawkins again, I think what's happening there is that the constructs that are made out of that data, how it's transformed into information and knowledge, uh, is in a sense that the science project really, it's, it's the construction of theories, models, conceptual frameworks, which cohere that data into larger and larger structures consistent structures, which again are subject to experimental um, access and critique and reformulation. And those uh, reconstructions, again, are always happening in the public domain. They have to be shared. They have to be the personal. They have to be um, not influenced by the presence or absence of the experimenter and so on. They have to remain stable under stable conditions. So the construction of those theories is well it's a little bit like the construction of a villanelle or a sonnet or a, or a, a limerick uh, or a haiku as long as you're in you know for uh, the structure of that knowledge, the structure of that data, like the structure of a villanelle or the structure of a sonnet or limerick presumably stays, it remains stable under all conditions and, and uh, under the gaze of all experimenters. 
So, so science in that sense is a kind of poetry. But if, I wouldn't say it's a poetry of reality. I would say it's a poetry of data. Uh, and of course, the peculiarity of science, which makes it very special, is the fact that it does work its magic on that kind of data in such a way as to make it as to be imp impersonal and to be um, or just have aspirations toward permanence in the way that good poetry should. The use of the term reality uh, I can completely understand in a sense that begs the question I think. Um, I think what we'd have to say there is that physical reality the physical reality that we share not our own indiv individual quirky surrealities perhaps but the individual reality, the realities that we share are best accessed through that poetry of data that we call science although there may be other ways of accessing it science seems to be the best um, poetic form to render the interpersonal uh, interpersonal data elements into uh, transcendent knowledge. <laughs>